Ah, time travel. The biggest cliche in all of science fiction. It's become a staple of staples. But whether it's a fish out of water comedy, <laughs> or something more dark and serious, the technological time travel trope had an origin. Back in the 1800s. And if you think that origin started with H.G. Wells' The Time Machine in 1895, <laughs> think again. China, 1887. A diplomat from Spain named Enrique Gaspar publishes a revolutionary science fiction book, El Anachronopite. He was born in Madrid in 1842 to parents who were famous actors in their day, but his father died when he was young. His family then moved to Valencia, where he studied humanities and philosophy for a while. By the time he was a teenager, he had already written his first plays. When he was 21, he moved back to Madrid to dedicate himself to writing. For a number of years, he wrote successful operas, but he was also a pioneer in social theater. These were much less successful, or noticed, because they were ahead of their time. His passion was social commentary, but that wasn't paying the bills, so he stuck to comedies, which were actually hugely successful for him, even if they did overshadow his true calling in life of advancing human thought. At the age of 27, he became a diplomat, and he traveled around the world with his wife and children. He spent some time in the Philippines, where he wrote for a revolutionary newspaper, El Diario de Manila. Even though his wife was from an aristocratic family, he was no fan of oppression. And his wife, Enriqueta, married him, much to the chagrin of her parents. The couple and their children traveled through Greece, France, but eventually wound up in China, Hong Kong. And it's here that Gaspar would write his classic. which it is proven that forward is not a measure of progress. That is the name of the first chapter, and it underlines the theory that the story puts forth to explain how time travel may be just possible. The novel introduces us to an eccentric and aging inventor by the name of Don Sindulfo Garcia, who lives with and cares for his young niece, Clarita. Hmm, where have we seen this character set up before? Could it be that the original writers of the 1963 Doctor Who premiere were just a little influenced by a Spanish writer from 1881? After conceiving of the idea of traveling through time in a vehicle, Garcia and his best friend and sidekick, Benjamin, decide to get to work in building the colossal machine. From Spain, the inventor and his niece, along with Benjamin, travel to Paris to convince the French to build his machine. It takes some time, but on a fine sunny morning, among much pomp and circumstance, the Anachronopite is unveiled.
Inside, there are mechanical brooms that keep the floor clean. And all throughout, chambers of unalterability where samples and people can be kept in suspended animation so as not to change as the flow of time reverses. But it's upstairs where everything happens. The second floor is completely electrical and the control room is state of the art. Cutting edge technology that will be needed during the adventures to come. An electrified atmospheric phenomenon allows the Anachronopathe to achieve flight. And unlike Wells, who never explained how his parasol spinning rickshaw actually traveled through time, Goose Bar described a method of time manipulation which to this very day is still scientifically valid. Here's a passage from the novel. The Colossus kept course without a soul becoming aware of traveling around the world at twice per second. Traveling around the world at two times a second would bring you to nearly 30% of the speed of light. And that's more than fast enough for time dilation to take over. Keep in mind that he wrote his story 24 years before Albert Einstein published The Theory of Relativity. Wow. It's enough to make one suspect that Goose Bar was a time traveler for real.